Good morning, Arendale. Good morning, Jennifer. On behalf of all the friends and members of HPC, and in the name of Jesus Christ, we welcome you to our worship service. Sitting behind me is <laughs> Becky Smith, and she's going to say a few things, but as she comes up, let's give her a hand for all she's done. A sitting ovation, not bad. <laughs> thank you. That wasn't necessary, but thank you. And that's exactly what I want to do this morning. I want to thank you and just kind of tell you about this past week. So thank you for all your prayers, your donations, your love, your support to this local community and mission. Um, we had a lot of help this week. I also want to give a, a hearty um, thank you to St. Anne's Church and First Presbyterian Church in Annapolis, who also donated their time with watches this week. We needed their help as well, and it was just really wonderful to learn and know these people and a little bit about their churches. So I actually look forward to partnering with them in other endeavors in the future. They were really just very lovely. Um, um, Arundel House of Hope has a large um, fundraiser every spring that they again have to do online. So I just wanted to invite you to that. It's going to be April 20th through the 23rd. It's their Bid for Hope auction. It's an online auction. So if you're willing, please look at that. And we'll get more information out as it gets closer. But it is a three-day event, and it's a, an online. It's This is in lieu of their annual um, bull roast that they have in the, in the spring, usually in March. Um, and then I just ask for continued prayers for Cindy, Ian, Nancy, Tina, James, Mike, Larry, Eric, um, Jerry, I'm going down their beds, <laughs> um, George, Frank, I think I have everybody. That we had 12, 12 people this week, nine men and, and three women, and they were lovely. They, um, I was told they would, they're the quietest bunch that any of the other churches have ever had, and I would have to agree, but they were lovely, thankful. And so just please continue your support for Rundle House of Hope and the winter relief. They have five more weeks of shelter before it ends. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. She's going to kind of try to come up next week and talk, too. I don't know if she will or not. We'll see. Uh, before I begin with birthdays and prayer requests, uh, all new officers, all new officers, please come to the lounge to have your picture taken after the service today. All new officers, okay, after the service today. Uh, also, in your bulletin, Ash Wednesday, there are two opportunities to receive the imposition of ashes. Both opportunities will be low contact, they will be ashes to go from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the front circle, as well as an Ash Wednesday service at 7 o'clock in the sanctuary. So note that. Uh, it's a short week for birthdays. We have just two. That's all. John Clifford's birthday is tomorrow, and Tony Werner celebrates his on the 23rd. Happy birthday. Bob Tucker is being operated on today to remove a blockage. Pray for Bob and Marga. Barbara Bryce would like someone to sit with her on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 o'clock to 1 o'clock. If interested, call her or maybe see Roz Ekman for more information. Can we do that? Okay, okay. And friends, continue to pray for those listed in the bulletin. Kathy Hanneken, Karen Fleur, Sheila Brewer, the family of Jimmy Cutter, Pastor Emma's uncle, William Forrest, Bob Sharp, Brenda Christian, Ron Thompson, and the family of Richard Thompson. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds for worship.
Please rise in body or in spirit and join me in the words to our call to worship. Let us trust in God and do good so that we can live in our communities in safety. Let us delight in our God and gratefully receive the desires of our hearts. Let us commit our ways to God because when we trust God acts, let us be still before God, and let us be patiently. Let us not envy those who do evil. Let us not act out of anger. Let us set aside revenge. Let us not fret. God illuminates the path of justice, so that we might follow in faith. God is our refuge in time of trouble, our helper, our rescuer, our Savior. Friends, let us worship God together. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the gift of the Holy Spirit. The proof of God's amazing love is this. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Because we have faith in him, we dare to approach God in confidence. Let us lift up together our prayer of confession. Let us pray. Gracious God, our sins are too heavy to carry, too real to hide, and too deep to undo. Forgive what our lips tremble to name, what our hearts can no longer bear, and what has become for us 
a consuming fire of judgment. Set us free from a past that we cannot change. Open to us a future in which we can be changed. And grant us grace to grow more and more in your likeness and image. Through Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen. Friends, hear this good news. Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone. A new life has begun. Believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. unless you are young or young at heart and would like to come forward for the time with children. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's come up here so the sun's not in our eyes. So today we're thinking about unexpected things. Have you ever worn an outfit that maybe when you came out of your room, people said, I don't know if that matches, but you wore it anyway because you felt awesome. Yeah, maybe you wore leopard shoes with a plaid shirt or something. There's a glorious picture of me in like six shades of purple with a bright orange purse when I was a little bit older than you. But I don't know where. I can't find it. I would have brought it. Have you ever tried a really weird concoction of food? Something that you didn't expect to taste good together, but when, when you tried it, it was like, that's really yummy. My brother and I, we had to pack lunches for each other, and so our thing was to make really weird concoctions of food that we would eat, but the other one wouldn't. Hmm. I once tried, um, like, queso blanco dip with Oreos. Yeah, yeah, the white cheese dip, like you get at a Mexican restaurant. Yeah. Like dipping in tortilla? Yeah, except for I used an Oreo. <laughs> yeah, it was, it's at 2 a.m. during a lock in, it's better than it sounds. <laughs> at 2 a.m. anything is better than it sounds. So sometimes love can make unusual things to go together. Love. Uh, so, do you remember who does God love? Can you think of who does God love? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Everybody. Everybody including Layla and Patricia. Yep. This week, Jesus told us who we are supposed to love. Okay? To us. So sometimes it's, it's easy to, to think of the people that, that we love and who love us and are nice to us, but he also tells us that we need to love folks who it's hard to love, too. I know, right? Who might not like us or be mean to us. Even that, so I'm supposed to love that guy back in elementary school who would 
like put ice in the middle of a snowball and then throw snowballs at me, even if there wasn't a neighborhood snowball fight? Even him. Uh, and somebody that I love in my school. Oh. Is my boyfriend. Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay. Breaking news. Yes. <laughs> so maybe maybe when he was throwing snowballs at me, what Jesus would have wanted me to do was tell him I'm going to pray for him. And then actually pray for him, not just be a smart aleck and say, well, I'm going to pray for you. Actually do it. I've never heard anybody do that. No? No. no. But that is exactly <laughs> what he was saying to do. To, to love folks even when we're not feeling like they're very lovable. Oh. So what would you, what would you do if somebody wasn't being nice to you? What, would, what do you think he could say that you think would make God happy to say? Because sometimes that's why people are being mean, right? Because something's bothering them. Yeah? It would be really interesting. The, the people grow as people, and it would be really interesting if that, if that not-so-nice-or-mean person became a friend. Sarah was mean. She was nicer. Yeah, that, that happens. I, I haven't seen Snowball Guy in like 30 years, so... Yeah, at least. So I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe if I see him, I'll try to be nice to him. Or next time somebody's mean to me, maybe I could maybe say what's wrong. what's wrong or say, you know what, I like your shoes. Just pick something easy to like about them. Maybe that'll help, you think? Well, we, we can give it a shot, right? Yep. Jesus sort of summed it all up by saying, do one to others as you'd have them do one to you. My shoes. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes they call that the golden rule. Can't resist. I grew up with Jeff Collar. I can't resist a pun. <laughs> so it's in two different books in the Bible. It's in Matthew and it's in Luke. So that might mean it's really important, right? So they felt the need to tell us about it twice. So I've got these for you. Besides all the goodies that were in the worship bag, you can take that home and you can color that. And you can cut it out, and it's got a spot that tells you where to tape it so that it'll be nice and big to help you remember. All right, so let's say a prayer, and then we can head back to our seat for children's worship. Okay? Just seats today. Just seats today. All right. We're sharing our space. Right, right. That's one of the ways we're showing love this week, is we're staying in our seats. All right. Heavenly Father, thank you this week for the chance to show and be shown your love as we go to school, come to church, uh, help at shelter. Help this be a week where we get to do that more, and you encourage us to do that more. And we thank you for your blessings and, and your nudging. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. as we prepare to approach God's word this day, let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and our minds 
by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Friends, our first scripture reading this day comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 35 through 38, and then 42 through 50. Listen for the word of God. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? Fool, what you sow does not come back to life unless it dies. And as for what you sow, you do not sow the body that is to be, but a bare seed, perhaps of wheat or of some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor, and it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown as a physical body, and it is raised as a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, The first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the physical and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so are those who are, are, who are of the dust. And as is the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we will also bear the image of the man of heaven. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Then our second scripture reading this day follows directly after the Luke reading from last week, continuing on those words of Jesus that he shared with both the gathered disciples and the larger gathered body who are overhearing these words. Jesus said, But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not even withhold your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask them for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies. Do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be the children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and, condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This week, as I was thinking about this passage, and really trying to slow down and spend intentional time thinking about what God is speaking to us through it this day, I came across a couple of quotes. G.K. Chesterton said this, 
the Bible tells us to love our neighbors and also to love our enemies, probably because generally they are the same people. But then I also had a song running through my head. There's a faith-based band called The Brilliance, and if you have never heard them, I encourage you to look them up. And they have a beautiful song called Brother. And I will give a caveat here in case he's watching. Hi, Stephen, this is not about you. Stephen's my twin brother. But they have this beautiful song. It's all about what we see when we look into the face of our enemies. And the chorus repeats over and over again. When I look into the face of my enemy, I see my brother. It says, forgiveness is the garment of our courage, the power to make the peace we long to know. Open up our eyes to see the wounds that bind all of humankind. May our shutter hearts greet the dawn of life with charity and love. And then it invites us again to think about when we look into the face of our enemies, we see our brothers. Those two quotes have been rolling around in my head along with the assumptions that we bring when we hear about the golden rule. You see, so often we reduce this passage down to that one sentence, verse 31. It's very easy to make coloring sheets out of and put on t-shirts and frame. But just as so many of Jesus' words require context and looking at what's around it, so does this one. It is, when we start to dig deeper into this passage, perhaps even more difficult to live into those words that are given in verse 31, those words that are so commonly given as the golden rule. But the first question you might be asking yourself, what in the world do these two passages have to do with each other? And I have to admit, when I first noticed that they were paired together in the lectionary, I asked the same question. These seemingly disconnected passages, one, a letter written to the church in Corinth about the spiritual body and the human body and the first man and the heavenly man. And then the other, this very specific words from Jesus inviting people to live out their faith in ways that perhaps the world invites us to not to do. But what I love about the lectionary is sometimes God moves in and through it in really unexpected ways. You see, as I was reading through these passages, there's something uniting about them. First, is that they are a little bit difficult to understand. We might think we get what it means to love our enemies, or at least have some sort of grasp on it. But it might be a little bit more difficult to understand the reading from 1 Corinthians. But perhaps, perhaps that letter to the church in Corinth reminds us why Jesus is sharing these words in Luke. It helps us to understand that the command that we get to love our enemies and to do good is something that we cannot do on our own. You see, that command to do love is counterintuitive to every fiber of our human beings, our human nature. But it is through Jesus, through the love of God made manifest that walked among the earth in this unexpected way, transforming the world then and now, that we are empowered to love in this way, in this counterintuitive and difficult way. Perhaps we cannot quite wrap our minds around what every single nuance in the First Corinthians passage means. But when we sit with the mystery, we realize that God is bigger than our human understanding, and that is a really good thing. We try to understand the difference between humankind and God, but what we know is that God invites us to love in a very different way 
than what we might do when left to our own devices. And this is incredibly difficult love. Perhaps that golden rule is easy enough, especially if you are not quite always kind to yourself. If you flip that on its head, then it justifies being unkind to others. And yet we are called to love, to care, to lean into that difficult love that we are invited into by that holy mystery of God. Throughout the past seven weeks or so, we have been asking the question, what now? What do we do now? Who are we now? Those early people of faith asked that question as well trying to understand what it meant to be a follower of Jesus in a time when it was not easy, when life was not easy. Perhaps the answer that we are offered this day is to love, even when it's difficult. To live into that difficult love that we are invited into in the transforming nature of God's love made manifest in Jesus Christ. But there's something about this passage that I realized, perhaps for the first time. You see, when I read this passage, I heard it as an individual command. It was all about me. And perhaps when you heard it, you heard it as well. That you was for you as an individual. And yes, God calls us to love as individuals. But see, there's something about the you here. And I'll put this into words, the best words, one of my favorite words. It is not just you as an individual, but this is a y'all. In fact, this is an all y'all. This is that expansive group of people that God is inviting to love in this new and this different way. And that changes things. When we expand that you out, something that is truer to the original language, it changes how we encounter this text. If all y'all love those who love all y'all, what credit is that to all y'all? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to all y'all, what credit is that to all of y'all? Now, it doesn't just make Jesus sound a little bit like Paula Dean, but it invites us in a different way to think about this passage as a community. And how does that change things? We're invited into the mystery of our faith as a community that wrestles and wonders and tries to understand. We try to understand Jesus' life and death and resurrection just as those early believers tried to understand, sometimes getting it right, sometimes getting it wrong. We try to even wrap our mind around what kind of love we are talking about in this passage. But it is the kind of love that we get to express as a community. That Jesus was inviting those early believers who were struggling to figure out who they were to be to express as community. As an all of y'all sort of thing. Earlier this week, I shared some words from the Holy Textures blog. And in this word, there is an explanation of the word agape. I'm going to share those words again. But I want you to hear them this time, not as an individual, but as part of a body of faith. And think about what it means when we expand the story in that way. David Ewart writes, the word used for love here, agape in Greek, does not mean romantic love, liking, or even friendship. What it does mean is wholehearted, 
unreserved, unconditional desire for the well-being of the other. Nothing is held back. There is no hesitation, no calculation of cost and benefits, no expectation of receiving anything in return. No payoffs. There's only total desiring of the well-being of the other for their own good. He writes, but if you agape your enemies, the ways that you dislike and opposition will always express your total desiring for their well-being. Your total desire is to be in relationship with them that God desires for you both. But not just the you, the all y'all. You see, that does change things. It changes things quite a bit. Changes the ways that perhaps that early community understood this passage. They may never have heard it in the individual sense that we have so often translated it as. Perhaps it was transformational to that early community who were literally hated, who were persecuted, who faced the most difficult punishments and sometimes even death. Hearing these words were hard. Living into them were even harder because they were very real consequences that they were facing from their enemies and oppositions. To perhaps today when we hear them, when we hear them in this communal way, they are just as transformative. But I don't know exactly what that looks like. You see, even I have a hard time shifting this from a selfish sort of passage into a communal sort of passage. But I think we are invited to do that. So how do we live into that? What does that look like? How do we stay in community with those that we disagree with, with those who hate us? How do we do unto others as you would have them do unto you as a community? It's difficult. And I don't have all the answers, but I think we are invited into it over and over again and are invited to think about what it looks like. But maybe we aren't doing so without direction. You see, Jesus does offer some suggestions. He invites us to do good, to bless, and to pray for all of those people who are named in those early verses in our passage from Luke. Those five little words, they are incredibly difficult. But perhaps as a community, we can continue to find ways to live into them, to be mindful of our neighbors, our brothers and sisters, our enemies, those who we agree with and those who we don't, those who we find it easy to forgive and those who we won't. Perhaps as a community, we're invited to keep digging into that holy mystery, keep trying to understand, keep listening for God's word, that word that Jesus spoke so long ago and speaks to us still today. So friends, what now? Let's lean into this difficult love. Let's discover together what it looks like to be the all y'all in this passage. It won't be easy, but it is possible. Thanks be to God. Amen. Friends, in response to God's word for us, I invite you to rise in body or in spirit and join me in these words from the brief, brief statement of faith from the PCUSA. In life and in death, we belong to God. Through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, we trust in the one triune God, 
the Holy One of Israel, whom alone we worship and serve. In gratitude to God, empowered by the Spirit, we strive to serve Christ in our daily tasks and to live holy and joyful lives, even as we watch for God's new heaven and new earth, praying, Come, Lord Jesus. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated.
friends, let us pray. Holy God, unite these gifts with all gifts that they may be used to share your love and your world to a world that so desperately needs it. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Friends, you may be seated. This day, as we look around worship, we see people coming to worship just as they are. Jeans and tennis shoes, t-shirts or button downs, some glitter. Whatever it is they are most comfortable in. These visual reminders remind us that God loves us just as we are and meets us where we are in our heartaches, in our pain, and in our joys. And we are a community that is tasked with loving and praying and exploring together God's love. One of the ways that we do that is praying for and with each other. So friends, let us enter into a time of prayer now. Holy God, on this day, we bring to you all that we carry. We bring to you heartache and pain, brokenness and grief. We bring to you those news stories that break our hearts. Stories of violence, of natural disasters, Stories of people being treated as less than human or less than beloved. We bring to you the difficult things and the heartache. And we cry out, how long, O oh Lord? And we know that you meet us and are walking with us and with the world, even in times of great pain and great sorrow. We take a moment now in this time of prayer to lift up in silence those needs that are known to us and those needs that are known only in the depths of our hearts. Holy God, you know what each situation needs. Strength, persistence, love, forgiveness, peace. Offer to all that which they need most, your loving presence. This day, too, O oh God, we come bringing our joys and the ways that we have felt your love and your presence. We lift up prayers of thankfulness for our winter shelter, for the ways in which we engage with the needs of our community, the ways in which we give dignity and a safe place to stay to those during the shelter week. We are thankful too for friendship, for family, for love that comes in unexpected ways and in unexpected places. We are thankful for a community that continues to dig into your word and listen to your love and be transformed by it. We are thankful for so many things this day, holy God. And in this moment of silence, we lift up to you the prayers of joy that we carry with us. Thank you, thank you, thank you, holy God, for these moments and all moments of joy and love where we have felt your presence. Most of all, we thank you this day for your love made manifest in Jesus Christ, 
whose life and death and resurrection changed the world and continues to change it now. And we unite our voices with the prayer that he taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, as we prepare to be sent out into the world, I invite you to rise in body or in spirit and sing out joyfully the words to our final hymn, called as partners in Christ's service. as we prepare to leave this place, receive this benediction. Y'all, all of y'all, we have been called into God's love, God's difficult love that challenges us day by day. Let us continue to explore together what it looks like to embody that love. And y'all just sang these words, but hear them as a call to action and descending. Called as partners in Christ's service. Called to ministries of grace. May we respond with deep commitment.
fresh lines of faith to trace. May we learn the art of sharing, side by side and friend with friend, equal partners in our caring to fulfill God's chosen end. Friends, may it be so. Thanks be to God. Amen.